I'm already a target, but sure. Meanwhile, right. I'll just I know how to deal with a graph. I just just need a look of his of his hair, and shouldn't be any problem. Oh, I know what you're planning. But, uh, Granny is willing to teach you, but you need to make a, uh, knowledge magic roll. Sure. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and inflict a minus 20 penalty. This is not the magic you've been learning. This is hedge magic. Uh, she's this trying to hedge This is magic her with no rules, no studying, and you realize that its principles are, in fact, different, but you kind of get the hang of them. It's not a spell or anything that she does to hide herself. Though you get the feeling that there's plenty of things she's hiding. But she teaches you how to lower down the presence around you. Hmm. To keep it at least from being too obvious. Unless someone is looking very, very closely. Sure. It's kept me alive for some time. Perhaps it'll do the same for you. Maybe. Perhaps this is the best that I can do with my talent. Well. If you ever want to learn more about the Imperial College, I mean... <laughs> uh, it's far too late for me, and I can't stand those types anyway. I prefer to live my own life. I have. Mm. Plenty of it. As long as you don't become... As long as you don't devil in dark magic. So you say... There appears to be a very fine line others define for that. She's sitting on the same log that you remember her practically sleeping against last time you were out here. And she's sort of looking towards the fire and uh, looking off into the distance a little bit. I think I want to stay here for a few minutes. A few minutes more. You can go ahead and start walking back. I'll catch up with you. Again, I'm going to do a perception check because... Mm. Oh, you get the feeling she has no intention of walking back. So. She looks this very is, forlorn. This is the end for you? At least I could die amongst my family. You don't want to go? I think yeah. could only think of one reason to continue on. Now that fate is sealed. Perhaps. <sighs> but it's unlikely that I'll be the one to plunge the knife straight into the graph's heart. Unlikely, yes. So why not now? It's a nice day. If that's what you want, I won't stop you. I just think it's... It's too bad, the children really liked you. There you go, going for the heartstrings. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you want to, like, roll a charm and just drop yeah. a plus 30 on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just sort of see, like, a single tear. She doesn't change expressions <laughs> whatsoever. But she remains just a little bit silent. They do deserve to grow up first. Uh, they'll miss their granny if she's gone. She says as she like slowly starts to stand up again. I'm gonna help her stand up and help her walk back. She she takes her hand and as she stands up. Uh, a little bit of a walk. A little bit of a walk. And you two start walking back. Uh, back at the farm, of course, uh, well, it doesn't seem like Gustav is around for a while, but, well, you do find Victor, Alexa. Okay. 
Well, I will let him know that uh, Lash is alive. Hmm? He is? Yes, Wait a second, I, I thought you said he was dead. I thought he was too, but... Did you, did you like, not check the body? Did you, did you not check his pulse or something? Well, it's kind of a long story, but essentially he and I were in possession of some gold that was tainted and sell it to a contact and never came back, and I Wait assume... Wait a second, is that why he dragged those scorpions away? Scorpions? Right, the, the guys with the giant scorpion tails that were, were made of gold oh. and metal. Um, she'll kind of shift uncomfortably and say, I, well, we knew that the metal was tainted, and anybody who might Am want it. I'm vaguely certain Victor was there. No, no, I'm saying, am I there? Because Victor was not there. Oh, yeah, okay. that was a combat, and you didn't put your Screen own NPC. Screen wipe that away. I, I Screen wipe that away. Victor, yeah. Victor along with you. It's like, I wait mean, a second. Probably... How do you know about the parts you weren't there for? We probably told Victor about it. Well, no, because no, we kept it a secret. Me and uh, me. And oh Alexa. yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, That's yeah, what I'm yeah. We... <laughs> well, you kept the gold a secret, but I mean, for the fight. Yeah, and no, I'm saying we also uh, got the bodies out there as a secret too. It's like no, no, it, yeah, it, you're right. Victor's playing his hand here. Either way, either way, she'll say, yeah, he, he just, I thought he, but here he is, I, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, I think he, something must, somebody must have kidnapped him, I mean, he was running around with all those shady individuals, but. Oh, I suppose it's about time he came back, I'm finally following through on his plan, after all, finally getting out of mid time. Oh, well, you, you, come on, we gotta go see him. All right. She will Victor take will, uh, Victor come over. along to see Lash and greet him and have a fun talk. Uh, fun unless talk. there's like anything specific Lash wants to say or talk about. No, I mean it's probably a lot of looking at Alexa and then turning our both of our backs to Alexa to go into hushed whispers <laughs> to reconfirm old criminal activity. <laughs> And you're sure nobody followed you out of the city, right? And where's my stuff at? I don't know. I all, all that was left was like a tent and a pile of shit. It was all in the shit. <laughs> oh no, nobody's looked at that. Of course, nobody goes through the shit. That's why it was hidden in the shit. But yeah, no, I mean it's not stuff that has to be said. Just you know, reconfirming all the criminal ties, all that other stuff. We are partners course, in crime. Victor is more than happy to just see an old friend of his. Especially alive. That's the good part. Uh, and of course, uh, by the time Gustav gets back, uh, Alexa, Lash, and Victor will uh, undoubtedly be all having a nice, good chat about old times. Yes. And that's what I said. My name is... On the way back in, of course, uh, Granny kind of, like, gives a stare at, like, each of you all. And especially at Victor, before kind of, you know, giving a little bit of a frown and walking away. I think this is for you. And walks away from Gustav. Demon. sense. <laughs> what can be sensed here? I s well... Lash is dead, so that's there might be a chance that's not Lash. Uh, I'm, I'm just uncertain either. if this would be picked up or not. No, there's but nothing to pick up. Be... For all intents and purposes, I am Lash, so there's nothing to pick up. It's bizarre and strange, but but it's him. He's got his memories and. Is it a demon? Uh, Gustav runs through his knowledge of demons, and he definitely doesn't seem to be possessed. His eyes aren't glowing, his tongue's not forked, he, he seems fine and normal. 
Uh, how? I, it's, a, it's a miracle. I, but how? I, I don't understand. It should be possible. It's... What happened is he, he said he he remembers knocked out or, or something, but w- whatever it was that we fought wasn't him. Yadi's bow. Well, and now Alexa's on full rationalization mode. <laughs> but doesn't well, they make... stolen it from him? But what? Why? Why stole this boy and then letting go? Doesn't make sense. It. I. Well, I. Uh, I don't know. Is this a um, conversation? They wanted to kill him. Me? Yeah, yeah. You just, they wanted to kill him. Remember? Who's that? Yeah, the nemesis. Uh, what was his name? The rat. Filthy rat, then like. Oh shit! I can't remember either. Yeah, but yeah, I also can't actually remember his name. I think it started with an M. Probably didn't invented it? it a lot. Motion. The rat is Motion. dead. Motion. Motion. Is Motion. The actual Motion. Nemesis, yeah. Dead. We. It... They must have been lying to us. They must have been deceiving us. But what? How? Why? Uh, uh, I. It's. How well? How else can you explain it? I mean, he must have just have gotten away somehow, and they must have tricked us into thinking that whatever that monstrosity was, we it was him, but it wasn't. He's he's alive. I see this, but this is making my head hurt. It doesn't make any sense. It's I. Reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> it does seem weird, though. I mean, he, there, do you remember that thing that was in the arena much? Because it didn't. It was a monster. It was, but they yes. said it was him. But it was something mutated. Yeah, but uh, Victor kind of like thinks and scratches his chin. Maybe it was, uh, symbolic? What? Uh, maybe, maybe the rats were thinking like, oh yes, we'll, we'll name this thing after him and then kill him and that'll, uh, that'll satisfy our revenge. So we can kill him over and over again. That has to be it, right? That doesn't what? seem right. No, that doesn't seem right at all. Oh, well. Who knows how these things I operate, I mean. Yeah, they're created by mutation, that's. It had it had its bow and his bow and it used it. I've just like. Did he hit I mean, anything though? Don't remember. Remember that he I, did, yeah. Ah, that's proof it wasn't me. You see what? Oh, who? I mean, had an elf bow. It's not really. I it's don't really know uncommon. many. I mean, they're uncommon, but you gotta remember, I bought it, so... It's not like I made the elf bow. No, it's more people we use it are very, very... Right. But, no, that was that was the joke I was going for, in character, yeah. is that oh. Lash always <laughs> misses, despite being amazing with the bow. It is a very logical fallacy. Strange, it's wait. Can I? Hmm. What else would we possibly prove he's an imposter, though? I mean, Lash well, will put his arms out like wide open, like, do what you gotta do, Gustav. I'm here, I'm in front of you, right? Well, okay, everyone, hold on for a few minutes, all right? It's not gonna hurt anybody, just flash, they confirm of anything, all right. Gustav will propose spell. Uh... Thunderstorm. Lightning bolt. 
Tá shine. Visible main visible, hidden or disguise, exposed in secret areas. Alright, drum roll is lash disguised. What do you mean is somebody disguised as lash? Um exactly. I mean any yeah, any illusion that will Yeah, something this like that. This is not an illusion. An illusion. There is no disguise. This... Alright, I this is Lash. I don't know. I this. Oh, how is it? it uh, it's a miracle. It's what it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. I don't. I. Where? Where were you? What do you mean? Where was I? During all this time. Uh, in Del Breeze. What? I woke up in Del Breeze. I was just telling Alexa. I was in the sewers, taking care of some business for the two of us, and, uh, I don't know, then I just woke up in Del Breeze. It's like the, the rats made some kind of strange plot. Wait. Wait, I know what he must be. Hold up a second, and Victor will fish through his pockets and pull out, like, a clove of garlic, and then just start, like, moving it closer towards Lash. <laughs> oh, good God! Not garlic! I can't go anywhere near garlic! I'm allergic! Ah, see, you are defeated and exposed! He says he, like, moves closer and just, like, lightly taps it to your chest. And I swat it out of his hand. That's stupid. Hey! I was gonna eat that. By itself? I don't think so. Well, with other things! Well, not after you rubbed it on me. Well, I was gonna wash it, too. Mm. A little spit shine, it'll be good as new. I'm not eating anything you make anymore. Now I know you spit on everything. Well, you never paid for anything anyway. Yeah, I never ordered anything from you. And Victor just sort of, like, giggles, picks it up, and, you know, starts wiping it off a little bit of the dirt. Not once did you pay for drugs. Not once. Well, he's once. definitely not a vampire. Never encountered a vampire before. <laughs> no, yeah. but I've read stories about them. I mean, I live in Stirland. I never saw one, but you know, we're close to them. But uh, I have no explanation for this. Neither. Anything else you want to test me with? I'm mean, still arms open. <laughs> you know. There's one test I can Man. think of. Flash, how much gold do you have? Give it to me. No. Aha! Uh -huh. I know what you are now. A miser? A cheapskate. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Haven't I always been? I mean, the only of other... anything, that proves it. The only of the tests I can think of are, like... They are, like, peasant tests, like... You know... Does he see weigh more than is a, a mutant. sack of flour? That's... Pick, throw him into a pond and see if he floats. Yeah, that kind of thing. And I, like, see if it bleeds. Like, it's not really pleasant and it's not really helpful. So, I don't know. If he drowns, then he really was Lash. <laughs> Yeah. How did... Del Burrs, did you just sign up with Berthold? Or did he... Or did you wake up in Berthold's house? Or, or what happened next? I don't think Berthold has a house in Del Burrs. At least oh. not as far as I know. He just came in and then we all left, so... Although I guess so he was he staying was somewhere. There? Uh, no, he hired a, a bunch of people all at once. He came in, he gave a giant speech on a tower across the river. Um, there was a large refugee camp in uh, Del Breeze, and I guess I was there. I mean, I just woke up in a tent, so... Uh, I, in whose tent? I guess my tent? What? I woke up in a yep. tent, nobody ever came back to the tent... I stayed there for a couple of days. But what about the other refugees? Do they know? 
do they know what? Uh, do they know if like how I got there or anything? Yeah. No. No. As far as I know, no. I mean, maybe some of them are lying. I don't know. According to them, I've just always been there. Which is odd too, because I'm, you know, That's I'm in a refugee camp, so I couldn't have always been there. I mean, he'll air quote while he's saying that. Couldn't have always been there if I was in a refugee camp. Look, man, just... I understand. There's a lot of questions here. I don't have a lot of answers. Uh, uh, that's a bad. I mean, they seize you. You like. So I guess for the time being, we'll just have to accept it and search for it later. Well, I mean, I am Talishin, so I don't no. know what other answers I can give you. How did you get here? Why? I walked. <laughs> of the other, why the other thought you were always here? Well, I that sort of things. So. Well, yeah, I can't answer the questions you have for other people. Like I said, I walked here under the employ of Berthold, who was paying me money, so I do stuff for him for money. Right. Well, I'm glad you're back. Yeah, I mean, it seems like incredible odds to run across you people again. Like, crazy odds. Like, what are the odds? Looking at good stuff. What are the odds? Gotta be at least one in 1,000, right? That's a big number. I don't know. It's all so strange. Yeah, I mean, it seems but... like... Like somebody set us up. Oh my god! No, I'm joking. This I have no idea. <laughs> All right. Cue the Mafia jumps out of the woods. Yeah, cue the Mafia, and on that note, uh, we'll go ahead and keep going down the road, if that's okay. Sure. All right. We're down was, the road. Because I was refugees are about Lash to try to gather information. Other than that. Uh, sure, if you want to go ahead and gossip it all up. Yeah. Is it a new day? Uh, Yes. It is at least a week's travel to Grimmenhagen, and you are uh, yep. nearing Hold maybe on. about halfway. <laughs> All right. Uh, you talked to some of the refugees, uh, particularly people from Delbris. And from what you can gather uh, of Talashin, nobody really heard his name before or until now, even, really. They definitely have had seen him around Delbreeze for a while, but nobody ever really struck up a conversation with him. Uh, does he know he got here? Well, I just assumed he came in with one of the refugee groups, says one of them. Yeah, well... Hmm. People setting up tents all the time, moving around. Just figured he was getting comfy. Yeah, it seems as far as you can tell, nobody really knows him. Settling. <laughs> Just sort of appeared. Yeah, he's gonna Truly try to it was a miracle. He's gonna try to think all week long what could have happened, like trying to piece together, come up with theories. Of course. See, this giant worm ate a hole in the sewer all the way to Delbreeze, and Lash fell through it. Some sort of wormhole to the breeze. <laughs> you see, it, it opened up to another dimension where a new realm of possibilities happened. The obvious other dimension is the Chaos Realm, so... Well, mm -hmm. the, the other other Chaos Realm. Yeah, Lash is actually a demon prince now. It actually <laughs> opened up to the Law Realm, which was retconned out. Sure was. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, but along the road... You come to uh, an almost familiar crossroad for a couple of you. Uh, this is the crossroad to Harsum, and 
Uh, brushed to the side of it is an old, rotting set of carts. Uh, Gustav, give me an intelligence roll. I'm gonna roll that. Nobody ever okay. cleared the road? You remember that, uh, the group from Underguard actually cleared the road on their way up here. There was an ambush here, and last time you had found the Black Arrows of Goblins. And in fact, many of their pit traps, which remain, uh, unfilled and fully exposed. Hmm. Huh. It's possible to walk around them, though. But, well, would you like to give me a perception with a plus 10 bonus? Yes. I would. Mm. Fuck. Sorry. My head hurts. It's okay. Hmm. Would anyone else like to roll perception, but without a bonus? You can try. I'm a smarty pants. I see something. Go. Hopefully Indeed it's an eagle. You, you see among the pit traps even more pit traps that have not been triggered. In fact, they look new even. As if someone has dug them for additional ambushes. Uh, yeah. No doubt there's un there's hostile creatures about that uh here are the un untripped traps them out so we can go around them. Indeed. Not too difficult of a task, one merely needs to be aware of it. Fortunately, with the crowd of almost 4,000 people here, <laughs> it's very hard to conceive that whomever set up this ambush would dare possibly attack. I, but, yeah, wouldn't go well for them. Mm hmm uh, as the days continue to stretch forward, uh, those who are sensitive to magic, Granny and uh, Gustav, can begin to see with their magical senses that the world becomes a little stranger out in this direction. That you can s that trees seem like they are more overgrown than they should be, or occasionally in your mage sight you catch a glimpse of blood bleeding from the sap only to turn and see nothing at all. And other times you hear the sound of drums. Caution, everyone. Caution. Like, there's things in the woods. Indeed. You go on edge, trying to stay aware. Yeah. Briefly catching sight of a uh, grisly figure in a uh, tattered dress pointing in your direction, Gustav, before fading behind a tree once again. Okay. Suffer my curse. Truly, these are the days of vague warnings. There are things in the woods. Yes. Every now and then, you can't help but feel a shiver up your spine. But, for the rest of the trip, nothing happens. I take the opportunity to do an outdoor survival check to see if I can find an eagle, perhaps? Okay. Uh, you've had about a whole week to do it. You could go ahead and give me a few checks to attempt to do it. Okay. Oh! And on your first outing, uh, probably only like a short, uh, the day after Gustav comes back from his walk with Granny, you immediately spot an eagle up in the sky that's been tailing you guys for a while, point up into the sky, loose an arrow, and knock it straight to the ground. Everyone and is so temporarily impressed by this that they forget that to try to scramble for it and get its meat. Eh. Allowing um, you to freely pick it up. So, for the sake of, of brevity, I'm saying that I would have shot it with one of those black fletched arrows that I was given. Um, Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I will have uh, Velvet drive the, the wagon and... Uh, feathers and work on perhaps making some sort of banner that almost looks like a pair of wings. Oh my, who's your friend? Ah, yes, this is Velvet. Lash, uh, um, and, uh... Oh, a pleasure to meet you, she says as she holds out a hand to the elf. Yeah, 
you know, take it under the palm, lean in, kiss the back of the hand. Pleasure's all mine, my dear. Ooh. Oh, she oh. smiles and, uh, very friendly person that you found out here. Yes, they call me Lash the Friendly. <laughs> friendly is my middle name. I'm awesome. sure we can see just how friendly you are later, she says, with like a little wing. Oh, I don't know. Seems like there's a little bit of room in the back of this wagon. She'll turn and wagon. like give a smile over to uh to Alexa. Oh, I'm sorry, are you two a thing? Well, it's it's complicated, but um with the look over to Alexa with the invitation to lash, um from, for Alexa to roll a willpower check. Uh, go ahead. Um, she will uh, look over at Lash and look over at uh, Velvet and feel a blush rising in her cheeks, and then kind of beckon Lash to go into the back of the tr uh, of the wagon with the two of them. There's a couple scenes of looking back and forth, eyebrows raising and. Rapidly. Yeah, and Lash Astrid will, like, rapidly. put two fingers into his lips, whistle. One of the peasants, come here, drive, drive the wagon for a second. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you Take this over. I got something to take care of. There you go. That basically covers the time period. A nice, yeah. fun time for both people and uh, constant paranoia and vigilance from Gustav. <laughs> As you hear interesting sounds off in the distance. All right. The staff couldn't care less about who's banging who. <laughs> uh, but once you get to the end, of course, you reach Grimmenhagen, where but a spare 200 people continue to live in this town. It looks like it has been uh, not very well put back together, but still better than uh, strictly mud huts from, like, an image child. There's actual stone and lumber used in their construction. And uh, plenty of very wide and well-growing farms. Mm. The people there all kind of come to a stop as they like look out into the distance <clears throat> and kind of gaze at the massive group coming in their direction. Eyes. What group? Your group. And the 4,000 refugees behind you. No, no, what group? Uh, what do we see in front of... I'm sorry, I... No. I'm sorry. Yeah. You see uh, mostly farmland. Oh, all right. And people stopping from their uh, daily activities to gaze and wonder at you all as you approach. Do we see the, uh, I don't know what it is, it's a fortress? Uh, that, you understand, is uh, about seven miles to the west. That should be visible on the horizon, then, unless there is a significant mm -hmm. landmark in between there and there? Uh, no, it's actually mostly flat grassland. There's some forest, but it is well out of the way of the line of vision. You can, in fact, see the castle out in the distance, up against the river. What's it look like? Uh, what does it look like? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because we have a map. And plenty of tokens as well. The castle out in the distance appears to be surrounded by a small moat. and has a drawbridge that goes uh, over the top of it to its front gate. Oh, I appreciate are... that you were hoping for a uh, surprise reveal with Lash there. I could tell by the token. <laughs> <laughs> you could go ahead and rename it by now, I'm sure. Uh... But yeah, uh, looking out on it, you can see a large number of people might actually be active up on the castle walls. This must be Gribbenhagen that survived, or the, the Graf's keep who managed to survive the subsequent attacks and invasions. The result completely neglected his, uh, his holdings and all of those villages were burnt to the ground. Indeed, your entire ride here has been nothing but uh, unreconstructed devastation, if nothing else. It's the, um... This, hold on. Is this an open uh, stairwell? 
doorway? Uh, uh, drawbridge. Draw bridge over the moat. Currently, it is left open. It's okay. kind of like a minor fortress. It's a fortress for Dang. ants. Uh, in terms of castles, it is a modest castle. No. It's definitely nothing of the sort of like the uh, Palace of Middenheim, nor the sheer defenses of like an entire city. Nor like other castles, which uh, are probably at least a minimum of four times larger than this. But this is definitely a sturdy fortification, if nothing else. You can see the main keep, the tall donjon tower in the center of it, and of course uh, all the walls and their turrets beside. How close would one have to be to be able to shout and be heard by those inside of the uh, the castle? I would probably say a few hun uh less than a hundred meters. Well, I mean, Berthold and his smaller entourage, obviously not the peasants, will start making mm -hmm. that uh, trek towards that distance. Okay. So you leave the uh, peasants behind and uh, head out. You're bringing the whole entourage, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you got it. Alright, so I'm going to put you out here, opposite side of the drawbridge. And you can see a number of people up there, kind of... Um, not necessarily in any type of uniform. They are holding a uh, number of crossbows and looking down. And you hear uh, one person kind of clear his throat and hack up some phlegm for half a second before uh, looking down and addressing you. Oi! Oi there! Who the hell are you? My name is Berthold Hartman of the Debris Hartmans. I am a Are you a bit away from Del Bries? Indeed. I have led this group of peasant refugees here to this current location in order that I might speak with Gra the Graf of the area. So I was watching Emmerich's rolls, I was hoping he was gonna cast Lightning Storm as a surprise or something. <laughs> no. No no, sorry. In your face, boom! Well, I'll see if he wants to talk with you then. What have you got to say to him? That his life is on the line, and it would do him well to come speak with me at his earliest convenience. Well, that sounds like a threat there, doesn't it? I, uh, pull slightly on the front of my tunic to, uh, show my, um, shit, I can't think of the word now. You remember what we called it before? The thing that proves that I'm a noble. Um, pedigree? Yeah, yeah. No, it's not. Well, I mean, I guess it is signet a form item. of pedigree. It's like a signet item, but it has a specific name. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Badge? Oh, yeah, heraldic badge. My heraldic badge. I said, I speak with the authority of a higherborn. It would do you good to remember this. The end it would remember to tell the graph. Ah, oh, fine, fine, you don't gotta flash your deck around. I'll be back in a moment. He says as he disappears from sight. Hmm. People on the wall continue to watch you for a while, where, in a while later, you see the same person come across the drawbridge. Uh, walking across, saying, his Lord Graf Sternhauer invites you in to speak. The rest of you can stay outside. By the rest so he of invites you, you in. By the rest of you, you mean... Yeah, these lot. Okay, out of character. When he says these lot, is he like waving his arm at the peasant mobs or at my entourage? He's waving it on to like the people surrounding you. Ah, uh, very well. Uh, I will allow most of them to stay behind, but this fellow here, and I'll indicate towards Mordrin, is my personal bodyguard, and he will not be staying outside. Uh, go ahead and give me a charm roll. Schemer? Nah. What's the other thing I usually roll? Yeah, the other guy's not a, uh... The other guy's not a noble. Doesn't apply. Definitely isn't. Oof. 
he kind of like waves his hands like, yeah, 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 just don't keep him waiting. Just come along already. <laughs> uh, and he definitely like... seems to have almost no respect whatsoever. Uh, but given that, you and Mordren can come inside to speak with Graf Sternhauer. And he appears to be uh, dressed finely up in uh, full plate mail and green and purple pageantry. <gasps> and he looks at you oh, as he gazes up from his breakfast. Sorry, I was breaking out into a laughing fit because it just occurred to me to go, Mordrin, get him! And then disappear. <laughs> <laughs> no survivors. Oh my. Uh, I was also hoping you were describing him as some like, fat guy, you know, pigging out, like the guy I used to deal business with back in Middenheim. Oh no, he looks uh, rather lean right now, actually. Of course. Well, Perhaps good. a little raggedy around the beard. Sure. But he uh, stands up and walks across and uh, holds out a hand to you, taking off his iron gauntlet. And I, of course, will refuse the hand and curtsy, as I always do. He sort of turns his nose up at you. Well, how about you introduce yourself, then? You know who I am? I am Graf Sternhauer, lord of this land and their surroundings. Yes, and I am Berthold Hartmann of the Debris Hartmanns. Of noble birth, and I will then presume the uh, produce the heraldic badge once more. Of course, I've heard of your father. He's a fine and respected man. Indeed. And what brings you out here? I am not aware if you've been informed by your contingent of guards of what is going on outside of your walls, and I will pause to see if he. Acknowledges anything. Yes, they've said there's quite a few people passing through. I hope you won't be staying long, will you? In fact, I believe that we shall. You see, I am in the midst of leading a... <laughs> a long sigh. Like, I, I did it off mic for some reason. Like, a long... <sighs> peasant uprising against you. <laughs> You have been found wanting in terms of leadership of these people, having sacrificed them for your own safety, and in turn they seek to make new lives here without you. So I thought it best to give you this chance to leave with whatever you desire to take with you before things turned violent. To this, of course, as his correction grows dour, and just who are you to criticize me then in my work? I have been out here fighting the beast men and the herds of chaos that have come through time and again. And what have you been doing? Rousing rabble? Word has it, in fact, that you've not been fighting but have been holed up here in your fortress while those outside of your walls have fought and died. In your name, for their names, doesn't really matter. As it turns out that your the population of your territory has dropped what twenty twenty five percent seventy five percent in these last years, and you've been what here indeed, I have no great army, and this keep is central to the defense of this province. This province exists fall. on the backs of the people within it, not mainly on you, and their deaths have proven a great hindrance to the trade and value of the territory in which you keep, and without that, it is not worth anything to the Midlands, or to the, uh, great elector, Toddbringer. My family has held control over this region for many years. If those who have left have come back to betray me, then they shall, uh, <clears throat> and they shall be treated as such. But of course, they've already betrayed me in the first place by running for, running from my lands. One way or another, they shall pay for their treachery. Again. And if this is what they bring here, then I suppose they'll be paying for it with their lives. Again, good sir. I did not come here to attack you. I came here to offer you 
Amnesty, I suppose, is the word I'm looking for here. Leniency. You and the army, I suppose. Well, it's a friendly it's little talk. More like an angry mob. No, this, what we're doing here, this is a friendly little talk. Uh, you see, again, I offered that you were allowed to be leave with anything that you want, anything you desire from your own holdings, that you take it, form a new life somewhere else. I'm allowing you to leave peacefully before this angry mob would have a chance to get a hold of you, to make the crimes that they perceive you guilty of to be paid for. I'm I don't know what your you. men have told you, but there is quite a large crowd out there. Quite more than he I have seen. Up his hands. Very well. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I shall not be giving up my rights, nor this castle, nor my lands. And should the crowd outside wish it, they may come and take it from my cold, dead hands. Dun, dun, dun. You'll find it will not be so easy. Perhaps then they shall learn a little bit of obedience, finally. Is that so? I believe our friendship here is ended. And, perhaps if you happen to die in this attempt, I shall be sh certain to tell your father and send your remains back to him. Please do. That would be most beneficial to my family. At the same time, should you pass away the ensuing battle, was there any next of kin or such that you would want me to send regards to? They're all here, and I shall be protecting them with my life. Of course. Uh, now leave me. Should you die, say... Take them away! <laughs> and that your family... What would you like to ask me to... They force you out of the out and uh, take you back to the drawbridge. Yeah, it occurred to me to maybe try a surprise attack, but that's not Berthold. Berthold wouldn't do that. <laughs> Chance oh. to surrender. Yeah. Indeed. Made my intentions known, I assume the drawbridge getting raised as my on our way out. Indeed, as you are on your way out, uh, it is in fact pulled back up, leaving uh, but the moat. I saw that drawing distance. No, you uh, didn't. Ah, uh, but now is the time to go back and plan. What is your plan? Cut off all supply routes. What is everyone's routes? plan, even? Well, you know my plan. I don't have to reiterate. Well, if the uh, this, uh, tyrant does not want to freely then we should surround the castle and uh, overwhelm him with sheer numbers. Disagree. Oh, what's your plan, then? Um, okay, I'll reshare. First step is to let them know they are being sieged, which is what I've done, because we live in a moral society in which these things are given a chance to play out beforehand. Now we cut off their means of escape, uh, and don't not allow them to receive any reinforcements, which means surrounding them completely. Now we begin to starve them out, not letting any more supplies past the siege. We're forming a picket line, basically. And now, uh, we time goes by, and they begin to starve and lose on um, supplies. We will begin to negotiate with their defenders, offering them incentives to leave, their lives, their freedom, uh, their stuff, or uh, even monetary incentives to the point where their hunger will overcome their uh, sense of responsibility or duty, and they will be wanting to leave, leaving the Graf and his family undefended. Oh, it's long and drawn-out siege? Yeah, but the bloodless one. I like this idea. Which is why, before we left Biddenheim, I formed a plan for a supply chain to keep us fed for a uh. long-haul siege. The best right. method. I mean, there's a lot more of us than there are of them, but yeah. But they're a lot more equi equipped. And the yeah, longer they could... it goes on, the less likely they will be, or the less inclined they will be to uh, die for a cause. And again, disposing a noble without shedding blood is, well, better than mm -hmm. killing them all. 
And as we all know, uh, nobody is inclined to stand up for him. Everybody around here hates him. Yes. So how do we divide the forces to maintaining the siege and then also rebuilding Grimmelhagen? Indeed. You will find that uh, you have control of all the tokens on the map, and they total mm -hmm. something about, I believe, 2,000 for uh, Berthold's forces and 1,000 for the peasant militia. And each side also has an additional 500 in the background that are non-combatants. Bertholds are busy shuffling food to and up the road. Uh, that would be what, the arena workers? Uh, no, the arena workers are the ones that you paid to work on the arena before that have come with. Well, you said uh, before that specifically one of my groups was just the workers uh, who had no combat ability. <clears throat> um, well, these are workers, they are basically the same as all the other peasants that you have, but they are... I'm delineating <coughs> that they are the different people. You've been interacting with them for longer. Okay. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Would that token of the people that were just workers be one of these that are on the map, or would they just be unrepresented? Uh, it's this one. Uh, you should see the names on all of them. No, 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 I mean the workers that are not skilled fighters that were just literally uh, workers. The unskilled ones are not represented on the board right now, right? Okay, so those are the guys I have going back and forth with supplies. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to go ahead and position people around, you will find you have control and can do so as you wish. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break while you do that. Okay. And use the restroom. Ah. I'll drink stone wine when we return to Untergard. Though, that might be for another plot arc. Morgan is uh, pursuing rune magic? Yes. Ah, okay. Oh, real quick. Uh, between us, the players, you guys only have control of your guys, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, I just we we're getting awfully close to mixing our guys up. I just want to make sure we could tell which ones were which. I can no, move right. Gerhard and, and uh, Bruce. Oh, wait, your guys are only named peasants. Mine are the ones that are yeah. named... Okay. Yeah. Okay, that yeah, should be and the peasant militia. That should be a good way to distinguish. All right, just it's wanted to make sure. Yeah, I seem to have control over the peasant militia. Yeah. All right, I return. Everyone's moving to position, it seems. Uh, for Alexa and Gustav, where would you like uh your crew to be? Well, if there's two thousand, and and I'm just spitballing here, but if the uh, if the Delbers group positioning to do the siege, maybe we should go back to try to reestablish some sort of authority in the town of Grimmelhagen. Uh, or at least some people. Try. Combatants, you, you know, hanging out the, the siege uh, zone. Peasant militia with you, then. How many would you, uh, how many would you take? Well, we'll take the non-combatants, and then we'll take, like, a couple hundred um, to... Oh. One of the groups, then. Let's take this guy. Because the town also should be secure. If the Graf's soldiers are stuck in this keep, if they are, in fact, patrolling the lands, that means they won't be doing it anymore, so we should certainly provide that or... or one so we have some form of legitimacy. Okay. So if you want to go back and... Uh... Interact with the town. Go ahead and tell me uh, what you plan to do. Um, Alexa will uh, ride out very conspicuously on her horse um, in armor and whatnot and, and have the peasants kind of come into town and uh, say that the, the, the town has been liberated from the cruel and vile clutches of the graph. And, as uh, soon as those words come out of your mouth, of course, the uh, crowd that's come around to see what's happening all start to boo. Oh no, they're booing, oh, huh? Oh, oh. Why 
I was saying boo Not burns. Us. You're all Jeez. traitors. We what? aren't traitors, my friends. We're here to protect you and rebuild this uh, Grimmel Hagen back. Look you. at them. They're all underguards, filth. First, they betrayed the draft by going out and forming their own town just to escape. And then they leave his territory, and now they're back to kill him. You are there, aren't you? So you're part of this. Don't act like, like you have any moral superiority. My ass has sacked you, my good this friend. This is your final warning. Oh! oh I'm gonna Wait, I, I have, I'm gonna re-roll that. <laughs> I can do it two times, so I'm gonna re-roll. Much better. Uh, so, so Gustav is like, shut the hell up, Bob! Alexa will have more of a, a uh, good cop. She'll say, no, please, my friends. I was once a but a poor farmer in this area before the, the, the lands were overrun by vile beast men and terrible green skins and eggs and only the gods know what else. We've come here to, to rebuild, to, to rebuild Grimmelhagen, to bring us out of this nightmare and back into prosperity and safety. We're here to, say, to stay with you, to live with you, to grow with you as neighbors and friends. Well, why don't you come and do the rebuilding instead of hassling our graph? Because the graph is is a wanted man. He's failed to protect other... Entire villages have, have been destroyed as a result of his negligence. Only Emperor himself can come down here and do that. This is his lands. Well, we are also servants of the Emperor. Uh, here that's, that's taking control, but I am here to protect you. Uh, go ahead and roll some charm to see if you can try to start winning them over. Oh, re-rolling. Come on. <clears throat> yeah. They're at least willing to somewhat agree to that. Uh, what was the last thing that they were agreeing to here? Uh, uh, or at least, you know, just telling them that uh, I'm, while well, the graph is, is not protecting you by this and by the by your friends and neighbors, we are here to protect and rebuild you as well as friends. Well, of we course he's protecting us, though. He's got that castle out there. He's even hired mercenaries lately. It's mercenaries, you say? That's right. Whole bunch of them holding up out there. Well, the beastmen track in. They don't even try to go for the walls anymore. If the beastmen track in, we will be the ones to put them down. Not the graph and not his cowardice. I'll believe that when I see it, for sure. But, um... As long as they're not openly, like, throwing rocks at us, uh... The efforts to... Yeah, it looks like yeah. they may have been preparing to, but they have kind of, uh, put their rocks away back in their pockets. I'm, I'm, uh, my name is Alexa, and uh, if you have any frustrations or concerns or anything at all you'd like to speak with, of, of course, my, my door is open to you as a, as a neighbor and friend. And, uh, she will actually ask around the crowd to say, um, to ask more about their, their fields. Uh, I'm sure they're can help and I of course would like to lend assistance in, in making sure that the, the lands are plowed so that the don't grow hung go hungry. Alright, go ahead and uh roll me a gossip check. Okay. See if you can get them talking. Um I'll fortune point it one more time. A different roll. Uh yay! Alright, you get to talking to them, and it appears that uh, growing has actually been pretty nice lately. Turns out, with so much uh, empty fields, they can freely rotate their crops around. Uh, and so they've been managing probably about five times the amount as they would ever have had uh, had the population not diminished. <laughs> That's a lot. They've actually been supplying food to the graph as of late. Though, as many lament, it looks like there's no way they're going to get it to him now. Oh, uh, I know the markets in Delbers are in need of it. <clears throat> if 
uh, and certainly any any villages in the area, there's certainly a, a food shortage that's probably going to happen in Hawkland. Well, we've been trying to keep ourselves fed first, and as long as we can, with whatever protection the graph can get us, then we may as well keep trying. So, oh, what are the defenses of the town look like? Because I know it's been sacked a couple times now. The town is basically in rubble. There are no such thing as defenses here, except perhaps a few ditches di dug every, uh, around a few areas. That barely qualifies as defense these days. The piles of rubble might be kind of defensible. Now, as far as the, the, the militia, we should try to find as many uh, carpenters and stone workers and anything like that to start... All right. Uh, so here's my problem two rules yeah. for that. There are plenty of people with plenty of trades. However, uh, if you have your uh, back group, your non-combatants, do something that'll be their uh, action during the week. Okay. So we will have the non-combatants. Half of them will work on clearing rubble and, you know, finding places to rebuild homes. The other half of craftsmen will work on setting up or fixing defenses, like uh, repairing doors and uh, if there's big holes in the wall, those um, and that sort of thing to, to try to as best as possible. Alright, so you're basically rebuilding the city then, aren't you? Yes, as, as much as it can get with the uh, limited time and supplies and equipment okay. that we've got. Roll me a skill check of 40, and that will represent their work. There are people who are skilled and maybe even good at it. Uh, just roll d100 then? Yeah, d100, try to get 40 or under. Okay. No. Yeah. It turns out it's actually very difficult to make progress. Okay. Well, I mean, people kind of set up the plans and, like, move the rubble out of the way, but they don't build anything up. It's it's getting closer to flat, usable land again, at least. Yeah, there's a lot of clearing that needs to be done before any progress. Some people kind of dig out one of the uh, basements and find out there's actually a few wine barrels left down there and end up getting drunk during the week. Uh, yeah, that, that seems about right. Uh, Gustav, anything you want to do for uh, this first week of the siege? Uh, make sure everyone is well fed, protected, and keep an eye out on the woods, because you never know. Indeed. In fact, food will be a problem for your group. Birdhold has plenty of food coming into him, as he has prepaid for it, and has a constant line shuffling to and fro from Middenheim. Meanwhile, of course, uh, your group has to go hunt. Someone will need to do some outdoor survival. Mm. You don't happen to have any, do you? <laughs> so, uh, Victor laments that uh, he too is not that great at hunting. I, mean, I don't, but I can try. So, I will. Uh, fortunately, you could get some people to come with you, but you managed to succeed. Great success. You take a bunch of people with you and uh, start hunting the woods, gathering anything that you can. And essentially, get to eat for the week. Uh, I was going to mention you'd have a plus 10 bonus on this, because turns well, out having only 200 people in the area means that there's plenty to find. Well, even more great of a success, then. Indeed. <clears throat> However, of course, given that there's 1,500 people now in need of food, the, the bounty of the area will start depleting very rapidly. All right, so week one of the siege begins. The defenders all hunker in and seem to have no issue just staying inside their castle and refusing to leave. Uh, for week two. Oh, wait. Oh, oh. I had an idea. Um, Tell me. I wanted to, in the cover of the night, uh, spook the guard by casting marsh lights. Okay. Uh, what's the range on that? 
It doesn't have one. It can uh, wait. Uh, it I it can appear fifty square in front of me, but for the next hour, it can move in any direction. I think it's like a hundred meters. Yeah, you can basically do that safely if you wish. Yeah. Yep. For the first couple times that you do it, uh, you do get the kind of reaction you're expecting. People are like, what are these lights? Ah, Will-o'-the-wisp. And you can hear a few crossbows go off in the middle of the night. But after a few nights of it, they sort of stop paying attention to them if they don't do anything. Oh. All right. Now you uh, trick them by summoning real Will-o'-the-wisps. <laughs> yes. No, no, I will. Really treacherous. They become inured I... to it. Now they won't defend themselves. No, no, no. Uh, then I will use sounds to produce everything screeching and sounds of things going bump in the night. To I, I want to deprive them of sleep, basically. 